The great Tang Dynasty poet Li Bai is known for his poetic talent and drunkenness. So today, I'm going to present a poem that best expresses both his poetic talent and his fondness of wine. Before I do that, I would like to talk a bit about the views on wine drinking from the two dominant philosophical schools during Imperial China, that is, the Confucianism and Taoism. For Confucians, that is, the scholar officials of most dynasties, wine drinking is an integral part of their professional life and private life. Many scholar officials enjoy the drinking in professional gatherings such as ritual ceremonies hosted by the court, such as sacrificial ceremonies to the heaven, the earth, or the moon. Such ceremonies are often followed by drinking parties and poetry or painting competitions, depending on the host's plan. Wine drinking was also part of social gatherings, such as celebrating a good harvest in the autumn, rain praying ceremonies in the spring, or celebrations after an important civil service examination, etc. Even Confucius himself was recorded in the analects that only in his wine did he not limit himself although he never got drunk. I'm Dr. Gao, a philosopher obsessed with poetry. I make videos about classical Chinese poetry, philosophies, and traditional Chinese medical literature. If you like the contents of my videos, please click the like button and subscribe my channel. I also offer one-to-one -one online lessons on these subjects. So if you would like to read the original Chinese text with me, please contact me. Here's my email address. Now, let's look at the Taoist view on wine drinking. Theirs is a mixed one. On one hand, drinking excessively is frowned upon. This view is clearly expressed in the Tao Te Ching, the Taoist classic. It is regarded as harmful and often lead to disorder. The other Taoist classic, Zhang Zi, also states in its chapter 4, Yi Li Yin Jiu Zhe, Si Hu Zhi, Chang Zhu Hu Luan. Drinking at a ceremony often starts orderly but ends in disorder. When drinking excessively, people become raucous. However, on the other hand, wine drinking is also regarded as one of the paths to achieve harmony with the nature or Tian. For a Taoist, the ideal state of being is to be one with the nature, which means that one integrates his or her spiritual and physical aspect as one, cultivates his or her vital energy or Qi, aligns himself or herself with natural patterns and connect with the transformation of all things. There is another passage in the Zhuangzi explaining this point more clearly. But before I set this passage, I would like to talk a bit about the concept of Tian. Tian is an important concept in all Chinese philosophical schools. I might need to make a video about it one day. Here I'm just going to present a brief account of how this concept is used in early philosophical texts. In early China, especially the Shang and Zhou dynasties, we are talking about a time between the 16th to the 5th century BCE. Tian is the place God resides, and it has supernatural power over human affairs. Sacrifices to Tian are recorded in oracle bones and the written history such as Shang Shu, or the Book of Documents. These beliefs continued to Confucius' time. For instance, when his favorite disciple Yan Hui died, Confucius lamented, Yi Tian Shang Yi, Tian Shang Yi, Oh, the heaven destroyed me! 
or the heaven destroyed me. Here, Tian can be understood as heaven. However, by the 4th century BCE, the concept of Tian was in a naturalistic transition from a supernatural being to the natural world. The character Tian is often used together with the character of Di in the phrase of Tian Di, meaning the sky and the earth, that is, the nature world. In the text of Zhuangzi, we see that Tian is used in both ways. Sometimes it has a supernatural connotation, sometimes it simply refers to what is natural. Now, let's look at that passage from Zhuangzi chapter 19. When a drunken man falls from a carriage, though he may be injured, he will not die. His bones and joints are the same as those of a sober man, but he is not injured in the same way. For he has kept his vitality intact. He is not aware whether he was riding or falling off a carriage. Death and life do not concern him. Hence, he is not fearful of being hit by things. A drunken man can be so intact because of wine. How much more could a man achieve when he is kept intact by tian? The sage dissolves himself in the transformation of heaven, hence nothing can injure him. So, according to Zhuangzi, a person has his heavenly endowed nature, just like everything else. But he also has his judgment and preference that he would impose on how things should be around him. When he is sober, his judgment and preference might lead him to what is against the natural course of things. He is in control, or he believes that he is in control of how things ought to be. However, when he is drunk, he is no longer in control of himself or the things around him. He has lost his self and lets things happen to him. This means that a drunken man is better aligned with what heaven endowed in him. That is, his natural response to what happens to him than a sober man. In other words, drinking wine helps him to not only letting go of his ego and all the baggage with it, but also by the same mechanism to experience what it is like to be aligned with his own nature and the world around him just for the moment. In this sense, wine drinking becomes the medium for achieving an ideal Taoist state of being, that is, being one with the world. By the time of the early Jin dynasty around the 3rd century AD, this idea had become the accepted view on wine drinking. This Taoist view on wine drinking had a huge impact on many poets. Given that Li Bai's strong inclination towards Taoist philosophy, it is no surprise that Li Bai was so fond of wine and so proud that he could drink so much. His biggest fan, Du Fu, even complimented Li Bai's drinking in his poem, stating, Li Bai dou jiu si bai pian, or with one liter of wine, Li Bai composed a hundred poems. It is in this sense, wine drinking was celebrated as a spiritual practice by the Taoist. Another aspect of the Taoist understanding of wine drinking is closely related to the belief of the healing power of wine. Since ancient time, wine is used either as a remedy or an important ingredient in many medicinal formula for many conditions. The Taoists certainly take this on in believing the healing power of wine. So, as a Taoist practitioner, Li Bai had all the reasons to enjoy wine and other good things in life. 
This poem was first introduced to the English poetry circle by Isra Pound in his collection of Chinese poetry in the title of Kathy. Now, let me read the poem in Chinese first and then Pound's translation. After that, I would translate the poem character by character. Mu Lan Zi Yi Sa Tang Zhou Yu Xiao Qing Guan Zuo Liang Tou. 美酒尊重自千湖, now, let me read the punk's translation. This boat is of santal wood and its gunwales are cut magnolia. Musicians with gelled flutes and with pipes of gold fill the full sides in rows and our wine is rich for a thousand cups. Yet immortals need a yellow stock for a charger and all our seamen would follow the white ghosts or red them. Kuju's prose and songs hands with the sun and the moon. King Shaw's terraced palace is now but a barren hill. But I draw pen on this barge, causing the five peaks to tremble. And I have joy in these words, like the joy of blue islands. If glory could last forever, then the waters of Han would flow northward. Now, let me translate the poem character by character. Mu Lan Zi Yi Sha Tang Zhou Yu Xiao Jing Guan Zuo Liang Tou. Mei Jiu Zun Zhong Zi Qian Hu Zai Di Sui Zhou Ren Qi Liu. Mu Lan refers to fragrant magnolia. Zi means of, Yi means all. Sha Tang refers to the cherry apple. Zhou means boat. Both Mulan and Sha Tang are precious timber. Li Bai used these two phrases as generic terms to describe how luxurious the boat was. Yu means jade. Xiao means flute. Yu Xiao refers to flute made of jade or decorated by jade. Jin means gold. Guan means hong. Jing guan refers to hong made of gold. Here these terms are used to refer to the musicians playing this instrument. Zhuo means sit. Liang means two. Tou means and. Mei means fine. Jiu means wine. Zun means cup. Zhong means middle. Zi means Place. Qian means thousand. Hu is a large pot holding five liters of wine, as shown here. Zai means carry. Ji means prostitute in modern Chinese. However, during the Tang and Song dynasty, Ji refers to female entertainers. They were often slaves recruited from or prisoners or relatives of imprisoned officials, all girls sold by their parents. They were mostly just entertainers. So David and I translate the term as female entertainers. Shui means follow, Bo means wave, Ren means allow, Qi means go, Liu means stay. So the four lines read, on a boat of cherry apple with oils of fragrant magnolia, jet flutes and golden horn players sit at either end. 50,000 liters of fine wine for our cups, we carry the female entertainers and follow where the waves lead us. Kong San Qiu. Xian Ren refers to immortals. Yu Dai means wait. Cheng means right. Huang means yellow. He means cream. 
Huang He or the yellow crane is regarded as an immortal bird, often used as travel vehicles for the immortals, as shown in this painting. Hai means sea, He means traveler. Hai He literally means the seaman, but here it is used as a self reference. So we translate it as I. Wu Xin means mindlessly. Shui means follow. Bai means white. O means seagulls. Qi Zi refers to Qi Yuan, who was a high ranked official of the state of Chu. He was a loyal official but was exiled by his king. Qi Yuan composed a large body of poetry to express his love for his homeland and his king, as well as his sorrow when he could no longer help his king to defend his homeland against the aggression of the state of Qin, which eventually conquered the Chu in 2023 BC, 55 years after Qi Yan drowned himself in the Milo River. The Dragon Boat Festival is the day we Chinese people commemorate him for the last 2000 years. Chi means poetry and Fu means rhymed prose. So we just translate both of them as poetry. Xuan means Han, Ri means San, Yue means Mu. Chu refers to the state of Chu, Wang means king. Taixie refers to the pavilions and palaces. Kong means emptied. Shan means mountain. Qiu means hill. So the four lines read, Immortals wait to ride the yellow crane. I mindlessly follow the white girl. Qi Yuan's poetry signs with the sun and the moon, yet the true king's palaces and pavilions are long gone from the hills. Xing Han Luo Bi Yao Yue Shi Cheng Xiao Ao Ling Chang Zhou Gong Ming Fu Gui Ruo Chang Zai Han Shui Yi Ying Xi Bei Liu Xing Han means excited, Luo means put down, Bi means pen, Yao means shake, Wu means five, Yue refers to the sacred mountains, Wu Yue refers to the five sacred mountains. They are regarded as the places connected to heaven. Kings and emperors perform the sacrifices to them to celebrate their success. Shi means poem, Cheng means finish, Xiao Ao means laugh at, Ling means surpass. Changzhou was the name of a county located in today's Hebei province. But here it is used to refer to the Tang Dynasty premier Zheng Yin, who was famous for his poetic achievement. Since he was born in Changzhou, people often refer him as Zheng Changzhou. This was a common practice during Imperial China to refer a famous figure by the name of the place he was born or where he was the top official. For instance, Li Bai composed a famous prose to recommend himself to Governor Han Chaozhong in the title of Yu Han Jingzhou Shu, or a letter to Governor Han, and he used the name of the place Jingzhou to refer Han Chaozhong. He did the same here using Zheng Yin's birthplace, referring him. Gong means merit, Ming means fame, Fu means wealth, Gui means high social status. Ruo means if, Chang means long, Zai literally means to be present. So we translate it as last, and Chang Zai as last forever. Han Shui refers to the Han River. Yi means also, Ying means should, Xi means west, Bei means north, Liu means flow. Xi Bei Liu is an alternative way of saying the river flows up to a high place rather than naturally flow to a low place. Because of the geographic characteristics of China, most of the river flow from the northwest to the southeast. 
So Li Bai was saying that it is impossible for a river to flow to the northwest. So it is also impossible for fame and wealth to last forever. So the four lines read, "Very excited, I put a pen to paper, and the five secret mountains sink." My poem finished, and I laugh at those of the famous Premier Zheng. If worldly fame and wealth last forever, the Han River would flow northwest. This poem was supposedly composed in seven thirty four A D. The same year, Li Bai compiled a letter to the then Jingzhou governor Han Chaozhong, hoping the letter would recommend him to the emperor. As I mentioned in my video about Li Bai, Li Bai was not allowed to sit for the civil service examination because of his merchant background. The only way he could enter the bureaucratic ranks was through recommendations by either a member of the royal house or a high-ranked officer. In his letter, Li Bai painted himself as someone extremely talented, not just with literary talent but also with martial arts, and inspired to achieve great things. Although Han Chaozhong recommended many talented people to the emperor, including Li Bai's best friend Meng Haoran, for some reason he did not recommend Li Bai. My guess is that this poem was composed after Li Bai was rejected by Han Chaozhong, because the tone and mood of this poem is very different from his letter to Han Chaozhong. The political ambition is gone from this poem. Even though Li Bai still admired the loyalty of Qi Yuan, he believed that Qi Yuan's literary achievements would outlive his political achievement. After all, Qi Yuan was not able to save his homeland, but his poetry was still cherished by people by Li Bai's time. The poem expresses Li Bai's interest to pursue immortality, thinking about riding on a yellow crane and follow the seagulls to the immortal islands in the ocean. And of course, Li Bai's extraordinary poetic talent shines through his wild imagination and in the elegant lines of this poem. The luxury boat with beautiful female musicians playing the jade flutes and golden pipes. The endless supply of wine and the intoxicated poet. What a scene! It is just like the modern luxurious ocean liners, where the rich and the powerful entertain themselves. However, somehow this poem do not make us feel that Li Bai was living a decadent and corrupted life. Instead, it makes us feel that he is just having a bit of fun. And he did not even care about this flat indulgence. All the luxuries and riches will be gone, just like the rivers flowing to the southeast. What will last is the legends of the immortals and his poetry. Maybe the poetry of Qi Yuan too. I'm Dr. Gao, a philosopher obsessed with poetry. I make videos about classical Chinese poetry, philosophies, and traditional Chinese medical literature. If you like the content of my videos, please click the like button and subscribe my channel. I also offer one-to-one -one online lessons on these subjects. If you would like to read the original Chinese text with me, please contact me. Here's my email address. Thanks for watching my video. I'll see you next time. Thank、you